So today's video is a review of this, the Atomstack X24 Pro laser cutter engraving machine. Now the machine itself is comes pretty much pre-assembled. All that is required to do is fit this little bracket on with four screws and a couple of wires and a couple of bits of hose. That's all that was involved in putting the thing together. Dead simple. That's the laser unit itself. It's got uh, four six watt uh, LEDs in. So nominally 24 watt output, although there's likely to be some losses in the system. Now there's something about this particular unit that I really liked, and that's the fact that this shield on the end is fastened with magnets, which is really great. So dead easy to get in there and keep this thing clean. Now another little feature on this machine, there's a, a, a like a red dot crosshair laser which can be useful in helping you to align the thing. We'll, we'll look at that in detail a bit more. The laser itself or the lens is just in here and that all comes apart so dead easy to keep this particular unit clean. Let's screw this back on. Now this pipe down the side here is for the air assist. So if I pop the little guard back on, we'll drop this back in place. The focal height is established by sliding this up and down and tightening a couple of little thumb screws on the side. Not much to it. The machine itself also has a really substantial air assist pump. This is really heavy, it's quite a, a big unit. I've already tested this thing out, it works a treat. We've got a little control on here, we can turn the air assist off or vary it. I don't know why you wouldn't have it pretty much on full blast most of the time. But anyway, there we go, that's the basic setup. Now another interesting feature, which you might have spotted on the side here, is a little Wi-Fi antenna. And we can connect to this machine with um, a mobile phone. So we'll have a look at that, we'll have a look at the mobile phone app in the fullness of time. Um, other things that are noteworthy is that this frame is all one piece, like a, a die casting. I'll turn it over and we can have a look underneath it in just a second. Um, so it's stable, it's quite, it's quite heavy for, for what it is. Um, really nice. I like the cable chain here. It, it's just, it's good. Now the linear rails for the y-axis are sort of concealed inside the frame of the machine. There's nothing here to sort of snag, no loose belts um, running backwards and forwards. Seems quite nicely thought out. Now on the front of the machine we've got a key switch, a uh, great safety feature. There's obviously the main on off switch. We've got an alarm function as well. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. So rather than sort of run through this thing too much, what I'm gonna do is just for this video, cut loads of stuff. Now Atomstack sent me a pack of materials, all sorts of random bits and pieces, and we'll get straight into having a look at those and seeing what we can do with them. So this is the underside of the machine and you can see it's got a sort of a die cast channel section frame and all of the sort of the control gear and the electronics are contained within the channel. Now the channel section is open to the base of the machine and it is possible to get in there and see the electronic control board. It would be nice if there was a little cover on there. Uh, I've had some ideas, I might add one myself, although in practice of course this machine is in use, it's all you know, we sat on a tabletop or whatever and everything will be protected. But I do like the way everything is concealed. I think cable management on it is quite good. For example, there's a lot of cables that run up here that ultimately go onto the, the laser carriage and there's a separately fitted guard here which is keeping everything neat and tidy. So overall, it's sort of pretty much what I would expect to see um, and looks good. So among the exciting things that Atomstack sent me were some of these 
anodized aluminium business cards. Now this gave me a great idea. Let's produce a jig that can hold these and I could engrave several of them at the same time. So I created a very simple jig design in CAD. Um, I'll show you that now put into Lightburn and you'll see my very simple business card idea with all my details on. So to create this jig, I've got myself a piece of plywood and I've just cut one corner of the plywood off just to give me a little bevel so that I know that that corner is always going to locate on this corner of the framework. And then that piece of ply drops straight in and presses up against the corner of the frame. Having done that, I inserted the laser module and sent it to its home position in this bottom left corner. And from that I was able to engrave the outline of the jig onto this board. I've then repeated that process by cutting a piece of material to fit in there and I've run a cut pass around the outside of the jig and spaces to take all of the business cards. And so that can drop on there align itself with the engravings that I've done underneath and now I can drop 12 cards straight in and run an engraving sequence to do all 12 in one go. Now it occurred to me that I might want to engrave all sorts of different things so rather than permanently fix this down what I'm going to do now is add a little strip of material along this lower edge and up this side that I can drop that template into and it will butt up to that material and that will be held. And then if I decide I want to engrave bottle tops or whatever else, all I need to do is make a new one of these and that bottom left corner will always register with the bottom left corner of my jig I've made. So I can always sort of maximize the available engraving space. So what I'm gonna do then is Disassemble all of this, get my piece of timber out and I'll glue a strip along here and up this side here and that'll have the jig finished then we can get on with engraving the cards. So then this is the, the kind of the spoil board if you like and I fitted these strips down the, the side and the base. I included a little scale on as well, I don't know why, but I thought that might be useful. And you can see, perhaps a bit more clearly now, how that's just going to drop in. And so this corner is always the origin of the machine. This is the sort of extreme um, point at which the laser will reach. And here's the other corner. So it's 365 millimetres wide in the x-axis and 305 millimeters up in the y-axis. In actual fact this little piece is slightly smaller than that, it's about 10 millimeters too narrow on the x but it doesn't matter. So that's how I'm thinking of doing it. I'm thinking also I might put some little holes in here and embed some magnets such that when I drop that on I can then use little magnetic hold downs. Although I think it'll work as is just for now. Now I can replace this as I mentioned previously, I could have a little sort of frame, an engraving frame if you like, for all sorts of different materials, be they, I don't know, coasters or bookmarks or whatever. Um, just drop it in and I know that this corner is always going to be zero, zero, if you like, or the origin of the laser. Okay, let's get on with actually engraving the cards. So we're all ready to go here and engrave some wonderful multi-coloured business cards. Now it occurs to me that the air blast from the air assist might be sufficient to just raise these and cause them to shift um, during the engraving process. Now I said at the start of the video I couldn't see why anybody would want to run this on anything less than full power but perhaps this is a situation whereby having the um, the air assist sort of dialed down so we've still got it but it's at a very low level hopefully that won't disturb any of these cards okay so I'm going to hit the frame function in Lightburn 
and I'm just going to check that it, it sort of gets everything it's a really good check to do that first of all to make sure the machine is going to do exactly what we expect it to and with that we can click start and watch the engrave process Now all the time this has been filming I've been wearing some safety glasses and I thought what I'd do is to just pop them on the camera now to give you an idea of what this is like um, looking through the safety glasses which are supplied with the machine. Now I'm actually wearing a second pair myself so I can't actually see in filming this the difference but hopefully you'll see there's far less flashing and hopefully that's a slightly softer um, uh, image to look at on your computer screen. Obviously laser light is very dangerous, reflected laser light is as bad as staring at the laser beam itself, so always if you're using a machine like this wear some protection. And if I take the glasses away now, hopefully you'll see the difference. Let's see what we've got. Let's see if I can get it out of the little jig first. There we go. So there we go. I've never been important enough before to have a set of business cards, but there we go. Now I've got some. I can go and do some very important business deals. I'm pleased with those. They've all come out nicely. So look at a gold one. And the pink. And the blue one, all identical, all really nice. So having engraved the front of the cards, I thought we might as well put something on the back. And whilst we're at it, I thought I'd show you a handy little tool in Lightburn that you might not be familiar with. So this is the artwork I've chosen. It's going to be one of my little 3D printed brake vans. It's a Southeastern Railway Express goods brake. And I've added a serial number here. And alongside the serial number is this curious piece of text. Zero followed by four Ds. Now if I select that piece of text and come up here, this tells us what type of text. And currently it's normal. But if I select the drop down menu, we could choose serial number. Now that's quite that's quite useful. If I come over here, there's a little tab just under. Well, let's change that back to how it'd normally be. Normally, you'd see the cuts layers there. Let's click variable text, and we can put some parameters in. So I've already filled this in. We're going to start with number one, and this currently is number one. So we can fill those two uh, boxes in. And we're going to do 12. We could set this to whatever we want it to be, but 12 will do. So that's all fine. Now if I zoom out, what I'm going to do actually is select all of that and just group that so that now behaves as one sort of set of bits and bobs. Let's place that into one of these little holders. It hasn't got to be perfectly lined up. OK, let's zoom in and see the whole screen and select that one again I'm going to use the array tool now I've already run through this once before I um, started filming this so some of these settings are already kind of baked in but I can add columns so if I want three columns there we go 
Now the spacing of those columns I'd already figured out to be 27 millimeters. I could change that, make that whatever I need it to be, but it just so happens that for my jig 27 is going to be fine. Now we can add some rows as well. I want four rows and previously I'd calculated that 17 and a half millimeters was what I wanted, but again we can use these little up and down arrows set that to how we want it to be, how we want that to sit. Okay, so we click OK. Now if we have a look, if we were to zoom in for example, each one of these, the serial number, still displays as 0DDDD. However, if we click the preview tool, just up here, if I zoom out, oh hang on, excuse me, that's ignore that because I've only got one selected. Let's select all of them, this will make some sense, and hit the preview tool. It's going to think about it for a moment or two. Optimize the cut plan and there we go. Now we could zoom in on any one of these and we can see it's put the zero number, it's changed it to 0001. Two, three, all the way down till finally we've got serial number 0012. So that's quite a handy little feature. Now what we can do in Lightburn is select that to Auto Advance and then each time we, um, we, we print another batch of these it will advance the numbers up. Of course if we do that we will need to set a higher end figure so it's perhaps worth leaving that with the default 999. Anyway, I thought that was a useful little tool. Let's run those and see how they look. Having made these business cards I thought I'd make a little holder for them and for this I'm using some 3mm black acrylic and you can see here in the video the acrylic has a like a paper protective covering on. I'm going to leave that on and cut the thing. Now I've designed a stand very simply um, in CAD. It's a two-dimensional development. It's going to have some fold lines in. I'll form those folds using a hot wire strip heater. I won't show that in the video here. We'll just cut to the chase. Anyway, that's the, uh, the thing we're going to do. Let's cut this out quickly. Now there's a feature that I really like on this machine and that is that it has a sort of a red dot crosshair kind of um, alignment aid. Now what I've done is I've taken the magnetic safety guard off just for the purposes of this demo and I've got a scrap of material here that I've and I've measured it and it's going to give me I think it's about 320 by 95 millimeters is a box that I should be able to cut out of this. So I'm going to line the lower left corner up with my red dot. I've drawn a rectangle of the correct dimensions in Lightburn so if I just click the frame tool in Lightburn we could see the machine now trace the shape of that rectangle and I can eyeball the position of the red dot and see that that stays within the the bounds of my scrap of plywood here. Now it's worth noting that the red dot is offset from the laser nozzle. Now the 
offset is already accounted for. When I click cut on Lightburn, the machine will move the cutting point to where that red dot is and it kind of automatically work. Some lasers you can retrofit a red dot pointer, but then you'd have to make an offset adjustment in Lightburn. This is kind of all good to go. So I'm going to click start and let's see what happens. So as you can see that's fitted perfectly within that scrap of material that I've got there. That red dot is really really useful indeed. Now whilst we're at it we may as well take the waste piece away and have a little look at the quality of the cut edge. It's really nice, really clean. Very pleased with that. That was cut on a setting of 12 sorry 10 millimeters per second um, which is pretty good so this big box here is the air assist uh, unit or the air pump and that blows compressed air through the nozzle and that does a number of things it helps clear the cut path it also tends to cool down the the area that you're cutting and this can help you produce finer detail reduces the overburning and, and all sorts now there's a knob on here we can turn this fully off or we can up the quantity of the airflow there's an air hose so they supply quite a long piece of air hose so you could have this located separately from the machine if you wished and that plugs into the back of the frame of the machine there's a, a neat uh, pipe that ducks it through this cable chain and then across the gantry to the, the laser head itself. Now what I'm going to do is just do a straightforward straight cut and for the first half of the cut I'll have the air assist off and then I will slowly turn the air assist on as we get to the second half of the cut and then afterwards we'll better have a look and see how effective this thing is. So let's line the camera up with the job just here. Let's focus it in. something like that. Now I'm just going to click the frame tool in Lightburn first of all and that'll give you an idea of where and how it's going to cut. So I've turned the air assist off, in fact let's put that into frame. So the air assist is off, I'm going to start the laser and then you'll see me wind this knob here up as the cut progresses. Okay, that's the job done. Now if I offer this up, hopefully the camera's going to pick up. We've got a little bit of sort of overburn here where we didn't have any air assist. And then I turned the air assist on and I slowly ramped it up from low power to a high power. And I'm not sure if the camera is going to detect this, but I can see that my cut or my kerf, which it's actually ever so slightly finer here than it is at this end, although that is negligible. But what is clear is the benefit of the air assist. This is definitely a much cleaner cut than we've got over there. If we look at it from the reverse side, you can see we've got some burning on the underside as well. But at this end where the air assist was turned on, it's nice and clean. So without any doubt in my opinion, the air assist is a really useful feature to have. Now I'm shooting this bit of video after I've made the film and edited it all. And during the editing process, I noticed that the laser crosshair is actually out of alignment. It's whereas the kind of these crosshairs should correspond with the X and Y axes, it's, it's actually twisted through something like 45 degrees. Fortunately, it's a really simple process to adjust it on here. So let's have a look at how that's done. So very simply, first thing we do is turn the machine off. 
because I don't want to stare into the the laser cross hair. And we could turn the thing round, take that magnetic cover off, and the crosshair laser itself has a slot running through the middle. And I can insert a screwdriver, or in this case my multi-tool, and just twist it. If I now pop the laser back, and fasten it and turn the machine back on, you can see that's much closer to being correct. Now I'm going to tweak that once more, I'll do that off camera and get that alignment perfect. And so with that simple adjustment having been made, the X and Y crosshairs are now perfectly aligned um, with the X and Y axes, which is going to make positioning material so much easier. Now in my defence for not spotting this sooner, I must say that the my machine at work just has a single red dot, doesn't have a crosshair, and so the idea of a crosshair is a bit new to me, but I can see how this is a real advantage and a, an excellent addition to this machine. Now just because someone will mention it in the comments, I've taken the safety shield off just so that you can see the crosshair. This will go back on in a minute before I do any more cutting. Now another material I've been experimenting with is this laser engravable rubber and as an example I've been making some little rubber stamps so here's one that I have made that's uh, that's been engraved I'll put the engraving process up on the screen uh, I won't show all of it because it'd be a bit tedious but there we go that's a, a neat little rubber stamp and let's stick it on this little block self-adhesive which is quite good I'm sure there's all sorts of model making uses for this stuff so we've made a little stamping tool let's test it out so here goes let's get a bit of ink on it a bit more perhaps something like that there we go that's not bad. That's quite good fun. So that's my first go. We need to practice a little bit more on the technique, but overall, not too bad. So I've had some fun engraving some random bits and pieces. But really, this is a model railway channel, and what I'm guessing that most viewers want to see is how well this machine's going to cut, and particularly cut with sort of model railway stuff. And so that's why I'm interested in testing these laser machines out. So what I'm doing here is cutting a timbering base for a B8 turnout. I've exported this directly from Templot, and this is in uh, um, 18.83 millimeter gauge so we'll just let this cut and we'll have a look at the cleanliness and the quality of the finished piece and here's the outcome it's really nice the quality of the cut is superb if we look on the reverse side really clean really very clean indeed much cleaner than my co2 laser would do so I think we could chalk that one up as a win. That's highly suitable for the process of um, producing plug track. Now, have a look at the quality of the, the cut edge here. It's not all charred and nasty. It doesn't leave nasty marks on your fingertips. Really clean, really good. Very pleased with the cut quality of this machine. Now before we declare this test complete, there's one more uh, thing I'd like to try and have a go at and that's engraving a stone texture. So I've got something here, this is a test panel for something I've been working on at the moment. You can probably see what it is. And I'm going to just do a quick simulation. Hang on, let's select the thing first. We'll run a simulation and that's what I'm hoping will be engraved and we'll see whether or not that is an effective stone texture. 
so nothing to it but to do it let's see how we get on we can see the engraving settings that I've got set up here on the right hand side of my screen let's try it out So this seems to be a reasonable point at which to end the video. Now, I've had the Atom stamp machine for some weeks now and I've tested out cutting and engraving on all sorts of different materials. This for example is a picture of Bexhill West engraved onto a piece of plywood. And in every respect I've been quite impressed with the machine. The quality of the cut is first class and the engraving especially so. I've been particularly pleased with the way in which it engraves materials. Now, some of you are wondering why there's not been a video for some time. That's because I've been working on a particularly special project of which this is just one element. Now, this is, we'll, we'll come on to this in a, a future video, but this has got a nice brickwork detail which I've engraved using the Astro Stack machine. And there's another piece to it somewhere. There we go. If I show you this, this perhaps gives you some idea of what this bit might be and where the project is going. Anyway, next time perhaps we'll cover this in a bit more depth. Until then, thank you very much indeed. Check out the Atom Stack links in the comments below and I'll see you all soon. Cheerio.